What if the end is nigh? As we talk about biblical prophecy and end times, let's see what it's all about. Coming up next, right here on The Right Stuff. You are listening to the best, the only, the only place to be on Tuesday night. That's right. You're listening to The Right Stuff, and you're at the right place at the right time. From England to Canada, from Detroit to the Copano, we are showcasing Christian authors worldwide, giving you tips, tools, techniques, and resources for you, the writer, to hone and perfect your craft. Tune in every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time right here on WPJC 104.5. And your host, Parker J. Hi and welcome to the show. I am so excited you are here with me today. We are going to have a wonderful time today on the show. We are talking about end times biblical prophecy through the vehicle of fiction. We are going to be talking about that with my wonderful guest co-host and contributor today, Jane E. Woodley Hedrick. She is the author of the Omega Watchers, which is a fantastic series that you are not going to want to miss. Definitely go on Amazon today and get a copy of her book today. Love of my sister, get a copy of her book. You are not going to be disappointed, especially after we finish this episode of The Right Stuff. But first of all, let me tell you something. I am so excited. Next month, in just a few weeks, I will be at the Southern California Christian Writers Conference. It's very first one. I'll be teaching two workshops there. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and Google that conference, go online and register for that conference. Why? You are going to get so much information from this conference. Everyone is going to be there. A lot of the different authors that we read, indie authors, big authors, big names, they are going to be there. If you're an author looking for representation, agents and editors are going to be there as well. Why do you want to go to this conference? First of all, I'm going to be there the queen of Tuesday nights. You definitely want to go because I'm going to be there. But I would love to get to see you. For those of you who enjoy my work, I would love to see you. And then not just me, but some of the people that have been on the show over the last four years, they're going to be there as well. Isn't that exciting? You get to see some of the people that I've hosted over the years. And then let me tell you what else is going to be at that conference. Lots and lots of workshops. I'll be teaching two workshops. You know I'm an advocate for edgy Christian fiction, and so I'll be talking about that, as well as taboo subjects of Christian fiction as well. So I want you to come to the conference. It's from June 21st through the 24th. You are not going to want to miss this conference. And then guess what? There are other things to do there. So you can come for the conference and stay for the fun. It's going to be absolutely exciting. So go ahead, Google Southern Christian Writers Conference on Google, and you will find out all the information that you need, the workshops, the faculty, everything you need. You are not going to want to miss this conference. And then, of course, I know you guys have been anticipating my next book. It's called A Time to Say Goodbye. It is coming. I am still working on it. Some of you know when it's like to be an author. You know you got a lot going on. So it is coming. And thank you for your support of that. If you want to get an ARC of my new book, this is what you have to do. Go to my website, sign up for my newsletter. And if you sign up for my newsletter today or tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead. And when that book comes out, you're going to get a free ARC copy of that book book. And you don't have to write write a review, but if you do write a review, I would love to get your feedback. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. So if you want to weigh in, you certainly can by calling in at 646-668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air. Or you can hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Cole, hashtag rights. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guest on the Right Stuff Radio Show. We'll be right back. Question, if you write a book, everybody will rush out to buy it. Obvious answer, no. If you were a celebrity or if you had a huge marketing budget, then maybe you can get a lot of exposure for your book. Another solution would be to check out joeytweets.com. joeytweets.com is a promotion and marketing service with access to over one-third of a million followers on Twitter. joeytweets.com has three packages available to fit any budget. That's J-O-E-Y-T-W-E-E-T-S.com. JoeyTweets.com. Get some serious exposure for your books. Are you a reader looking for more compelling Christian fiction? Maybe something a little more edgy or a bit more real? 
Are you tired of most Christian fiction shying away from the truth and settling for a rose-tinted view of the world and its issues? Or are you an author who has a compelling story to tell but you're afraid it doesn't jive with today's brand of Christian or secular fiction? Are you tired of Christian publishers telling you that your content is too edgy? Or maybe you've tried submitting your content under the radar to secular publishers only to be told your themes are a bit too religious. We invite you to take a look at the Crossover Alliance. We are an online publishing company that specializes in edgy Christian speculative fiction, speculative fiction with Christian themes and real world content. Our company is formed from authors and readers just like you who are breaking into the mainstream and Christian markets with this compelling genre. Head over to the www.thecrossoveralliance.com for all the details on who we are, what we do, and what we accept. Right now, if you sign up for our email newsletter, you'll receive a free digital copy of our first short story anthology. Check us out today and help us spread the word about the Crossover Alliance, where light shines brighter in the darkness. We're back, and you're hanging out with the queen of Tuesday night, Parker J. and her guests, right here on The Right Stuff. Hi, and welcome back to the show. Like I said before the break, I am so excited you are here with me. We're going to have a fantastic time with my wonderful guest co-host and contributor today, Jane E. Woodley Hedrick. Jane, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderful, and thank you, Parker, for having me. I am so thankful for having you on the show. Let me tell you, it's been such a great anticipation of mine to have you on there. And I'll tell you why, because there's a really funny story behind, well, not a funny story, but an interesting story behind this. Now, as um, those of you who know who follow me, I have two shows. And on one show, we were talking about CERN. We were talking about CERN uh, with my one guest. And then all of a sudden, I got an email from Peter Younghusband, who introduced us together. And Peter said, you know, I was just listening to your show. And guess what, Parker? I just finished reading this book by uh, Jane uh, Hedrick called The Omega Watchers that really ties in the CERN aspect. And I said, huh, how interesting is that? And so I emailed the guy who was on my show that day. And I said, hey, Doug, guess what? There's a fictional book that has it. And you know what he said? He said, that means he didn't make it up. That's exactly what he said. He said, I mean, he didn't make Great. it up. And I thought, how interesting is that two people on two different sides of the world doing two different sides of the kingdom work come up with the same idea. So I'm really exactly. looking forward to that, Jay. I'm really looking forward to it. So what I want to do first, I want to have people to get an opportunity to know who you are. So go ahead and tell us who you, who you are in your own words. Okay. Um, I am from southern Kentucky, if you can't tell that by my accent. Um, (laughs) Born, raised here. I went to Tennessee for college, so that made it even a little bit worse in the accent. But um, I come from a long lineage of Bible prophecy studiers. My grandfather, uh, when Israel started going back into the nation under the Balfour Declaration uh, in 1917, he believed that this was ushering in the end times. And then mm-hmm. in 1948, when Israel was reborn, then my grandfather and my mother became very interested in Bible prophecy, and I just grew up in it, studied it, loved it. And after I retired from um, over three decades in sales and marketing, I wanted to take what I had studied and some new things that I was learning and incorporate all of that into novels because what I find when I'm teaching prophecy, and I have for many, many years, a lot of people tell me that scares me. You know, when you talk about the events in Revelation and the things, uh, you know, even the Bible says it's going to be perilous times, meaning it's just going to be absolutely unbelievable, uh, the things that are coming on the earth. And it is scary, but yet we have the blessed hope. And that's what I want to bring out. In an entertaining novel, it will draw people in, hopefully, to listen, to learn, and to realize that these are things that are coming, but we have to hold on to the promises that God has not appointed us to a day of wrath. I like how you said that because some people are scared of end times prophecy. Some people are terrified. And I can't understand that because you see these images in Revelation, these very vivid very disturbing images sometimes, but within that image, you see the majesty of Christ, you see the sovereignty of the Lord, you see the working of the Holy Spirit. 
And I love that you use that because you don't have to be afraid. And I love how you use that. And so you said that you worked for several decades <laughs> in mm-hmm. uh, sales and marketing. <laughs> so uh, I know as a writer, writers hate marketing. We hate sales. We hate trying to do it. Well, I won't say we all, but I know I get a little tired trying to market everything. So exactly. did that background help you with um, bringing out the message of your book? I believe it did. Uh because in sales and marketing, and I taught a lot of classes on how to reach people, how to communicate, you know, how, how to read body language. So any time that I am teaching prophecy, a lot of that carries through, you know, in my understanding of relating to people. And But now I have to say in writing a novel, it's very different in promoting what you feel like you're promoting yourself than promoting another product. So it's been kind of humbling, uh, and I feel intimidated sometimes, but yet I realize this is a message, I believe, for today, a message that God is wanting his people to hear. So above all, I'm pushing forward. When I started this novel, I didn't even know what direction I would take with it. I just knew I wanted to write, and I wanted to incorporate prophecy. But I had no idea that there was the genre of the speculative Christian fiction that was emerging into the market. And Mm -hmm. I was writing a book that wasn't, you know, a daily devotional. It wasn't something to inspire. It wasn't a romance like you write. You know, Mm -hmm. it was just out there, crazy, you know, like, wow, that's weird stuff. And then to find out there's people, other people, that are writing it, that are reviewing it, and now there are publishing companies like the Crossover Alliance that are looking for books uh, that are introducing this type of uh, storyline. So I'm just really excited about what is happening in this industry. You know, it's exciting that you say that because I'm a huge advocate of Christian speculative fiction, like I am for edgy Christian fiction, and, I'm, I'm, and for other mainstream fiction too, but I'm a huge advocate for Christian speculative fiction. I believe it is such a great way to explore many ideas in the Bible through the what-if scenarios, you know, exactly. and I like yes. that idea, especially for a long time, Christian speculative fiction was a redheaded stepchild of mm-hmm. <laughs> of the industry. Everybody wanted an mm-hmm. Amish book. And like I told someone, I have had Amish writers on my show. That is not a big deal, but I have never read one because I don't know if I can actually relate to an Amish character. But regardless, uh, I just love Christian's back of the fiction. I'm a huge advocate for it. The crossover alliance and I, we work together. A couple other publishing companies work together, you know, showcasing their authors and stuff like that. So I'm really excited for where this genre is going. We do have a caller calling in. We have a caller calling in from... Uh, Troy, Michigan. Caller, how are you doing today? I'm fine. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Did you have a question or comment for our guest? Well, yeah. I uh, just want to ask this question when it comes to Bible prophecy. Why do you think when it comes to Bible prophecy, there's so much division where it's concerned? Or, or, Or people become, in an effort to explain it exactly, they become fictional about it. What do you think about that? Okay, do you want me to answer that, Parker? Yes, please. (laughs) Okay, you know, I I think when we look at why are there so many denominations, you know, why can't we all agree on one particular uh, set of rules that we all live by or, uh, you know, why is there so much division in the body of Christ to begin with? And I don't think anybody has... uh, a definitive answer for that, but we view things differently, we interpret differently, and with Bible prophecy, there are so many layers to it. And I think this is where the division or the misinterpretations or varying uh, scenarios come in, is that there, well, let me put it this way, the rabbis believe that in prophecy, every prophecy, there's 70 layers to it. You just peel off and you peel off and you peel off. And what I understand may be on one layer and what someone else understands may be on another. And in the Hebrew understanding, everything is circular. It just keeps going around. And so what has been will be again. So 
just as the guest that you had recently on Revelation, Parker, uh, that mm-hmm. believed that everything was uh, back, it's already happened. He's, I think he's absolutely right. It has happened, but I believe it will happen again. One hmm. of the great um, uh, things that is in prophecy from Daniel when he was talking about the desecration of the temple and uh, that this was coming, the abomination of desolation, and it happened under Antiochus Epiphanes before Jesus came. But yet Jesus said that it's going to happen again. He said, as Daniel said, you know, when you see this. So can you understand that some things happen and then they do happen again? They're like foreshadowings of things to come. So I think that's where a lot of the, um, the division comes is that we're seeing it in different layers or maybe different foreshadowings. Okay. Caller, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. I thought the same thing, if I may say. I used I when I uh, I was told once that the things we're talking about they've happened many times in man's history, in the history of humanity. So what mm-hmm. makes the difference now? But as, just as you said, I like that thought about it. you peel away now, almost like you're peeling an onion, layer, yes. getting down to the actual actual uh, vegetable itself. The, you know, the onion itself. And, and and there are some things that are indicative of the times that the scriptures speak of that let us know the time is closer and closer. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Thank you. And I believe you're exactly right. We're peeling back to the actual center, and I believe that center will be the revelation, the second coming of Jesus Christ himself to rule and reign on this earth. That's what Amen. it's all leading up to. Amen. I like that. Amen. <laughs> caller, thank you so much for calling in. I really appreciate it. We have another caller calling in. We have a caller calling in from Kentucky. Caller, how oh, are home. you doing today? <laughs> Hello, caller? Good evening, sisters in the Lord. How are you? Oh, fine, fine. Thank you so much for calling in. You have a question or a comment for our guest? Just a simple comment, maybe. I. Oh, please. God is the author and the finisher of the Word of God, and I heard you talking earlier about it being frightening, uh, and obviously it is, but do you not think that our Heavenly Father designed it to be horrendously frightening uh, so that it would grip the soul of man, so that he mm-hmm. would turn from his wicked ways on the things that are about to come upon him? It just, just a simple comment, a simple thought. Thank you so much, Carla. I appreciate your comment. Jane, you want to expand on that? Well, I do believe that uh, through the intensity, through the warning of the intensity, the fact that uh, John the Revelator wrote, even though I, I know a lot of this is allegoric, but yet it's still letting us know that this is horrendous. Yes, of course we should want to escape it. But then you look at Noah, and he preached for over 100 years, that destruction was coming and people still chose not to believe. So (laughs) there will be those that will not believe no matter what. And that is the sad thing, but it is their job to tell them, to warn them, and to try to reach them. And we plant the seed and we let God be the one to bring the harvest. Caller, does um, anything else you want to add to the conversation? No, good answer. Uh, Still... God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and I, and I do believe that he meant for the prophetic word, especially that prophetic word that defines the end of the age as we know it, to be as frightening and horrific uh, and scary, if you will, as it can be so that the soul of man himself can make that decision without it being for lack of a better term, allowing it just to be as frightening as it possibly can be to grab their attention. Thank you Amen. all for allowing me to talk. Appreciate it. Appreciate you calling in so much. And those of you who are hanging on the line and you want to weigh on our topic, you certainly can. Simply press the one and we'll get you on the air. And I want to thank our calls for calling in. I know we haven't touched your book yet, but this is a hot topic. This is a huge topic. I mean, a lot of people are talking about it and a lot of people are 
worried about it, as we see the signs of the times that people say, people think say we're living in the last days, people think that um, the Antichrist is here, some people think it's a Muslim Antichrist, some people think it's a, um, American one, just different things, and so it's a hot topic, and you know what's so exciting, Jane, is that your book is quite relevant to what's going on in Christian circles today, and that's what I love about speculative fiction is that it's irrelevant, you know, because speculative fiction always takes those what-if scenarios and we expand on them. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick short break with Jane. And when we come back, we'll be taking more of your questions and comments. All you have to do is call in at 646-668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air. Or hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Cole, hashtag write stuff with your questions and comments. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. We'll be right back after these messages. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guests on the Right Stuff Radio Show. We'll be right back. Have you read the latest issue of SORMAG Digital, the award-winning literary magazine for multicultural readers and writers? SORMAG Digital is available quarterly and showcases interviews with the best authors in multicultural literature. SORMAG Digital features craft and business articles for those interested in writing. If you're looking for a good book, check out our book reviews on what's hot in multicultural literature. For writers looking for new readers to get in front of, SORMAG Digital is the perfect place to introduce your book. We offer advertising spaces that fit your promotional budget. Get your free subscription on SORMAG.com or order a print issue on MAGCloud.com. If you would like more information about SORMAG Digital, check us out on SORMAG.com or contact us at SORMAG at Yahoo.com. SORMAG Digital is the magazine for multicultural readers and writers. God gives humans the gift of making amazing stories to glorify Him. At SpeculativeFaith.com, our ministry is to help fans explore fantasy, science fiction, supernatural stories, and beyond from an intentional and biblical Christian perspective. We share daily articles and have extensive archives tackling hot topics like end times beliefs, the art of writing, creative excellence in the Christian subcultures, discernment, sex, magic, Harry Potter, and space aliens and the Bible. If you are a parent or anyone else with a discriminating palate, our reviewers explore fantastical novels, movies, television, and games in light of God's beauty, goodness, and truth. Want to find Christian stories? The SpecFaith Library lists every fantastical novel we can find from a Christian author. It's all part of our mission to discern, engage, and enjoy fantastical human creativity in honor of our Creator, Jesus Christ. SpeculativeFaith.com Exploring fantastical stories for God's glory. We're back and you're hanging out with the queen of Tuesday night, Parker J. and her guests, right here on The Right Stuff. Hi and welcome back to the show. We are having a phenomenal time with my guest co-host and contributor today, Jane E. Woodley Hedrick. She is the author of the Omega Watcher series. Let me tell you, if you like end times prophecy, if you like talking about biblical prophecy, if you love the book of Revelations, if you want to know what's relevant in our culture regarding that view of end times, guess what? You're going to want to pick up a copy of Jane's book, The Omega Watchers. There are two books right now. The first is called The Omega Watchers. The second is called The Third Strand. And we're going to get into her books later on in the broadcast. But what we're doing is taking your questions and comments, too, because prophecy and eschatology, end times, all that stuff is so important to us as Christians. We need to be aware of what's going on in the world. And Jane, once again, thanks for being with me on the show. I did get a question from Deborah in Sweetwater, Florida. Deborah asked, why did you choose the end times to write about? What do you hope the reader will get from your story? I love books about end times. Now it's from Deborah to Sweetwater, Florida. Deborah, thanks for your question. Jane? Okay, I love that question. Thank you. Um, again, this is something that has just been in my family for a hundred years, really. And um, as I would listen to my parents talk about it as I was growing up and then begin to study it for myself, I wanted to share this in a way that would reach people. And by putting it in novels and being uh, an entertaining story, the one thing that I really wanted to hit home on on in the first book, The Omega Watchers, was the paranormal deceptions that are taking place in so many of the lives of our young people, well, not just young, all ages, in the form of aliens. The uh, the program that's been on, Ancient Aliens, has got so many people believing that it was actually aliens that 
were bringing all this knowledge to the early civilization. And the thing that I'm seeing in so many young people is being drawn into these New Age movements, the coexist, whatever you want to believe. But the paranormal deceptions of things like astral travel and familiar spirits, that is so dangerous, and a lot of the Christian world does not realize it. Uh, there was a book that I had read, The Alien Agenda, and that's uh-huh. by Dr. Aaron Judkins. In fact, I'd ask him if it was okay to mention his name because we've been communicating some. But it's a fantastic tool for understanding the deception, the alien deception. I believe that is going to tie into the end time events. And I bring it into my book, into the storyline, and it will carry forward uh, in the series. But there's uh, been statistics of over half of the people believe that aliens do exist. And I Mm -hmm. believe they exist in the form of demonic deception. And, Mm -hmm. And the spirits, uh, when you're involved in astral travel, familiar spirits, all of this, it is demonic deceptions, and the Bible teaches that. So Christians need to be aware. You know, the average Christian mother, father, grandmother may say, oh, I, I'm, I'm not concerned about that. But what are their children and grandchildren believing and learning and getting involved in? So that's... That was the purpose in which I first started to write, and then it has just kept growing. I like that, and Deborah, I hope that answers your question in regards to Jane. And for those of you who are waiting online and you want to ask a question, simply press the one button and we'll get your question on air too. There's something that you said that was quite interesting, Jane, and those of the people who follow the network, you know I talk about this stuff on my Saturday show. And one of my guests may mention about the popularity of yoga and new age things and stuff like that, meditation, stuff like that. She said the thing about it, and it ties into what you're saying about people being deceived, is that it gives you the avenue for interference from the spiritual realm. And so one thing she mentioned is that, for example, people get stressed out. And when you get stressed out, um, sometimes stress can be a good thing. But we, we tend to see it as a bad thing. But stress sometimes can make you move or work or make decisions very quickly. But if you're taught to constantly not deal with your stress, you're taught to constantly just, you know, breathe in, breathe out, meditate. She said what starts to happen is that you begin to lose some of your critical thinking skills. And mm-hmm. that's why when I said earlier in the in the broadcast how you had came to this conclusion and you didn't know my guest and my guest had came to that conclusion, he didn't know you, you know. And it's like so people are on two different sides of the kingdom coming up with the same conclusions, which I find extremely interesting. So for those of you who want to continue to weigh in on this topic, feel free to do so. You can disagree with us. That's totally okay. We would disagree in the name of love of Jesus Christ. So, Jane, we're talking about eschatology. We're talking about your book here. And one thing that Peter Young Husband said about your book is this. He said, it was also refreshing. I'm reading his review on Christian Fiction Review Guru.blogspot.com. He said it was also refreshing to have God very much a part of this novel and not just mentioned. I appreciate that the author included the presence of God in a tangible way. And I like that aspect of some of these novels. Sometimes they just mention God like he's just this um, very contented, overboard overseer just watching things. He's just an observer, you know. But God is very much interested in what's going on in our lives because it all leads to the bigger picture of what he has for us. You know what I mean? So having God being very much involved in your story, how have readers responded? Have they responded like Peter responded or have they um, made more – commentary about that the response has really been amazing when I started writing I didn't know that I would or didn't realize how intimate relationships with readers could get uh, Hmm. when they would start sending me emails or messages on Facebook sharing certain things uh, that had ministered to them Um, let me share this one very quickly because it just happened as much time as you want Uh, There's a lady that had contacted me. She had just read my second book, and she had contacted me about how the books had ministered to her, and it was regarding the familiar spirits because Mm. she said she had seen spirits for most of her life, and she Mm. thought they were just bringing good messages. 
And when she realized they were demonic deceptions, how it completely changed everything. And how the name of Jesus, when we call that name, then there is no place the enemy can stay when we are declaring the blood of Jesus. And that was so special to me. And then I found out last week that that lady died of a massive heart attack. And oh. I, I just thought, Lord, if it made a difference, that's all that Amen. matters. If it Amen. made the difference. You know, I'm about and to throw a fan been, at you. <laughs> <laughs> there have been many fan. others that have contacted me, uh, especially about the astral travel. Uh, mm -hmm. One told me that I had described that so perfectly that she believed that I had personally experienced that, which I have not, but I knew someone that did. And mm -hmm. I got the information from them, and she told me, she said, I have, and it's the most beautiful thing you can ever experience. But yet, she didn't realize it was a demonic deception. See, Satan appears to us, or can, as an angel of light. And that's mm -hmm. what happens in my first book. Uh, my main character, Gabriella, this angel of light or this beautiful presence keeps coming to her and drawing her deeper and deeper into the paranormal world. And she is realizing that there's so much beauty that she has missed in her life but then all of the demonic things began to evolve and, and to manifest. And that's what happens when you get to that place, just as you were saying about yoga. Uh, mm -hmm. It just kind of, you open yourself up. And this is what happens in my story. She opened herself up. And as it came in, then it begins to take control. And you mm -hmm. begin to wonder, what am I controlling and what is this other force controlling? So only... Only through the blood of Jesus is there the power to break these dark forces. And the thing that's very interesting is that we haven't even gotten to the book yet. <laughs> so <laughs> I love people to know about the book because we're talking about all these things, but they all matter because um, these type of things are so subtle, you know, and um, they're so subtle because Satan does that. I remember one time, um, I believe it was my, it was my mother or pastor, one of them, they said, um, Satan is a, the Bible says that Satan is a lion seeking whom he may devour. You know, and sometimes the lion doesn't always attack. You know, what I mean, it's it, it yes. stalks you. And I was mm -hmm. thinking about um, I did a show uh, several months ago when you mentioned about the um, she how she said the young lady said she saw spirits things of that nature. I had a young lady on my show and she mentioned she said there was a woman who had been um, sexually accosted and um, she had met this spirit or they had they had did some kind of guided. Um, meditation or something like that she had met the spirit and the spirit was comforting to her for many many years she had seen it since she was 15 and was still with her when she was like in her 40s but then she became to christ and that particular spirit lingered and was saying awful things and stuff like that and she said you have to call on the name of christ to get rid of it and it was very yes. interesting that they had used this technique for a woman going through trauma and when she came to Christ, she had to let it go. And that's also very interesting. I like how you put these um, aspects of new age philosophy and new age belief into there, because what happens is that you start to open up the spiritual realm. And so let's go ahead and get into this book. I know people are like, okay, we have got to find out <laughs> what this book is about. So go ahead, tell us as succinctly as you possibly can. Don't give away the good stuff. Tell us what the Omega Watchers is about. Hey, uh, the things that we've touched on, that is part of the storyline, but the beginning of it, as it was in the days of Noah, um, I have for years really struggled with what does that mean because there's always been marrying, giving in marriage, you know, partying, all this kind of thing. Uh, so I knew there had to be a deeper message, something there that I was missing. And uh, as the, um, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found and they began to interpret these and give the messages, I don't know if listeners are aware, but a huge portion of those were from the Book of Enoch. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, okay, I'm going to read the Book of Enoch, which it was part of the Bible and is still part of the Ethiopian Bible uh, for centuries. And it gave the information about the fallen angels. And when mm -hmm. the fallen angels came and they had 
relations with and bore children with human women, then they created what the Bible says giants or men of renown or the actual word Nephilim or Raphaim. And these are the spirits that were on the earth at the time of Noah. And it had become so vile and so evil that God said, I have to wipe it all out. I have to destroy it. And he was just going to destroy it all. But he found Noah that found grace in his eyes because he was perfect in all of his generations, meaning he had no tainted blood. His blood was perfect. So his family survived. So that I began to realize that was what it was about. It wasn't just the people were sinful. And from there, it just evolved. And it's in the story. A lot of the uh, huge amount of information is wrapped into the story as this archaeological team are looking for answers and trying to find the meaning of how it all ties together with the end times. Because Jesus said, as it was then, it will be again in the end. And there's a lot of different opinions on what does that mean? Are these giants coming back? Uh, you know, is it going to be a mixture of science, technology, and, uh, and humans together? Or are there going to be actual demonic spirits, again, that is going to be roaming on the earth? So that's what the books are about. And in it is the paranormal, the aliens, CERN, how CERN could possibly be an explanation for the rapture, uh, the deceptions of the Marian apparitions. All of this is wrapped into the storyline. And so you can tell just from our listeners and our viewers here, you can tell just how massive the storyline is going to be. Can't wait to see some more activity from there. And I see some of you are holding online. If you want to weigh in, don't feel shy. You can simply press 1 on your phone and you can join in the conversation. Whether you agree or disagree, want to ask a question, want to expand on a topic, you certainly can. For those of you listening online, you want to weigh in, you can call in at 646-668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air. Or you can hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Cole, hashtag right stuff with your questions and comments. We're going to take another break and we'll be right back. Authors, are you looking for a new way to get your book in the hands of new audience of targeted buyers? Then a virtual book tour is for you. Right now, Virtual Book Tours is an excellent opportunity for you to introduce your book and who you are as an author. Launching your book is very important. A virtual book tour will connect you with readers. We at WNL, we specialize in book tours, book blasts, radio tours, cover reveals, and Facebook chat. Promoting and marketing your book is what we do. Online publicity, the exposure and the publicity is what you need. Let us help you reach new readers and a new audience. We take care of everything so you don't have to. We set up the tour for you. We connect you with bloggers to advertise your book by way of interviews, guest posts, and reviews. If you are an author of a newly published book, have an upcoming release, or just want to give a previously published book new life, a virtual book tour is your answer. Check our tours out at www.wnlbooktours.com. Visit me on Facebook. I am the owner, Paulette Harper. Engaging the culture's imagination through speculative fiction, The Untold Podcast produces audio fiction from a Christian worldview. Find us over at untoldpodcast.com, where we partner with authors to tell science fiction, fantasy, supernatural, and horror stories. Find links at untoldpodcast.com to subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, and a variety of other platforms. Each month we produce high-quality audio fiction that's free to download and free to listen. Our submissions are open, and we're always looking to add another great story to over 24 hours of narrative entertainment. Find all of our audio fiction over at www.untoldpodcast.com. We're back, and you're hanging out with the queen of Tuesday night, Parker J. and her guest, right here on The Right Stuff. Let me tell you, I'm having such a fantastic time with my guest co-host and contributor today, Jane E. Woodley Hedrick. She is the author of The Omega Watchers, which is available on Amazon.com. If you want to get a detailed 
um, interview and review of these books, simply go to my friend Peter Young Husband's blog. The name of his blog is Christian Fiction Review Guru dot com. He has some very detailed reviews of her books. They're just absolutely fascinating. And if you're interested in end times prophecy, biblical prophecy, eschatology, you definitely want to get a copy of these books. Let me tell you, we we're, we've been talking about so much in these books with Jane, and I want you to do this. I want you to love my sister today. Get a copy of her books. You will not be disappointed, especially after hearing this interview. Do you really think you're going to be bored? <laughs> not by any means. So go ahead, copy of the Omega Watchers today. And then, again, Jane, thank you so much for joining us on the show. For those of you who are holding online, I see you. So go ahead and press 1 if you have a question or comment for Jane. We're definitely going to get to that, too. So, Jane, you're writing this book. You're writing this book, and you're enjoying this book and everything. Um, what are some of the favorite characters that come out? I know I'm a writer. There are sometimes there are characters who I love and characters who I hate. But what's the one character that you absolutely adored and the one character that you just wanted to strangle? <laughs> well, of course, I adored Caleb. Uh, mm-hmm. He was the one that was the strength uh, behind Gabriella as she was going through all of her turmoil He was there for her. He had loved her since the first day of college when they met. And um, he came to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ in the book. And that, I think, is what Peter was referring to because I gave a complete scenario of how he found salvation as someone was sharing uh, the blood of Jesus, the cross, with him. The one that you will love to hate is Arcturus, and mm-hmm. he is the the spirit that appears to Gabriella in her night dreams and takes her on these journeys and these astral travels, and you can see that he is deceiving her and drawing her deeper and deeper, and he is just so beautiful and so mesmerizing as Satan can be. And the the funny thing about Arcturus I created the character, and I didn't have a name for him. And so in one of the scenes, Gabriella and Caleb are sitting out on the balcony looking out over the Mediterranean Sea, and the sun is going down. So I Googled what is the the brightest star in the Israeli sky on a summer night, and Mm -hmm. it's Arcturus. So I thought, oh, that's a beautiful name. I didn't even remember that that is in the book of Job, but I thought I'll name him Arcturus. And it just seemed so appropriate. But then what really began to make the skin crawl was further on, I brought in the story. I don't know if you're familiar with Edgar Casey, but he is from Kentucky. Uh, He was one of the world-renowned psychics. And there is Mm -hmm. still the Edgar Casey Enlightenment Center in New York City. But Edgar Casey would go into these trances, and he would get all of this information downloaded. And he would, if someone was sick, he could go into a trance, and without any medical knowledge, he could tell you exactly what was wrong with that person. But what really made my skin crawl was he also was called the father of the Arcturian civilization, alien Mm -hmm. civilization, and I thought, oh my Lord, how all that came together, and he taught that there is an extraterrestrial uh, society or from uh, another galaxy of Arcturians that are good, and they're hovering over, and they're protecting uh, the planet from the bad aliens, and this, they believe, these people actually believe this. Well, does that not sound like war in the heavenlies from Ephesians? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. we know that it is the heavenly angels, God's heavenly angels, and and the ranks and files of those that are fighting the demonic ranks and files. But those would be my two love-hate characters. You know, it's interesting how that all works out. And that's when I always believe the Lord leads us. He writes, I know writers... um, We did a show recently taught scriptures for writers, but the Lord leads us in our writing. I really believe he does that. Um, Whether or not you're writing eschatology, whether or not you write romance, sci-fi, whatever, he leads you in your writing if you allow him to do that. We got a caller calling in from Detroit. Caller, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How are you? Fine. Did you have a question or comment for our guest? Just a comment. You know, I was um, 
I was remembering about this one person that I used to work with. She told me that her neighbors had told her to get ready and to stock up because when uh, the end comes, she needed to be ready because you couldn't buy herself. So she had to prepare her home for the takeover. And I was like, what? <laughs> and she was talking about, they were talking about the revelations when you can't, won't be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. And her neighbors were ready to uh, not get the mark of the beast. So they said, you got to store up now. Like, make sure you got a couple of places where you can stock up, like public storage and stuff, and get your food ready and your canned goods and everything. And I said, girl, you need to go to church. You need to get into the Word. You're trying to avoid that. You're trying to get to rapture. It was just it made me, it made me think about what had happened, how the conversation went down between me and my coworker, talking about prophecy in the end time. I just want to make that comment. Thank you so much, Carla, for that comment. Jane, you want to respond? Well, I would say that there's no way that we can actually store up, you know, for seven years, and I know there's a lot of debate on pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, um, and being prepared for seven years would be extremely difficult. But I will say that even the government has brochures on having supplies in case of an emergency. And I think mm-hmm. it's a good thing to always have you know those in stock just in case something happens. But if you go back, and I mentioned this a while ago, what has been will be again. And, you know, the Bible teaches this, the the circular of it. And Moses, not Moses, I'm sorry, Joseph was told to store up for seven years. So is there something in that that is telling us that, you know, there's going to be seven years that is going to be very difficult, but yet... It's only the last three and a half. She's referring to Revelation 13, the buying mm-hmm. and the selling and the mark of the beast. And that is the last three and a half years because it tells, you know, that it's going to be a three and a half year period, 42 months. Um, I hope and pray that we will not be here. Uh, mm-hmm. No guarantees uh, because I know that those that say I know for sure, um, mm-hmm. How can we really know for sure? I think right. as these things begin to play out, uh, we will see and understand better. You know, I lean toward those that we are not appointed to wrath, uh, but Noah was lifted up above the flood, but also we saw the children of Israel. They were still in the earth, but they were protected in the wilderness. I know that God is with us no matter what happens, but it's also prudent you know, to have some emergency supplies. And I think that's practical, whether or not, with all the revelations or not, to be honest, to be exactly. honest with you. I think it's right. practical. You know, if it's a storm, I know if the if it floods here, you know, I, I remember when the uh, AC went out, I thought it was the end of civilization as we knew it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yes. uh, we definitely <laughs> need to be prepared for that. Caller, thank you so much for calling in. For those of you hanging online, just want you to let you know if you want to weigh in on our topic or ask a question, you certainly can. Simply press the 1. For those listening in, you want to call in, call in at 646-668-8485. One thing I'm um, interested in with this book is how have readers responded? I know you said the readers have been really generous. They've been very personal about this uh, book because it really touches on a lot of different aspects, especially about the New Age and the um, the New Age influence that is involved with getting into the occult and stuff like that. And that's something I've talked about on this show, on this show and my other shows. I've talked about that a lot too. And I like how you put that in this book because um, these things are deceptive and subtle. And I think that's the biggest part of it is how subtle these things are. So I'm glad you also added that aspect into the book. But let's talk about some practical things because this show is always about encouraging writers to write. And there are some authors out there who have not picked up the pen to write. And they're saying, well, no one will ever read my book. No one will ever want to read this slop. I know I'm a writer, but I had those thoughts myself, you know. So I want to ask some practical questions. This kind of relates to your writing process. How long did it take for you to write Omega Watchers? It took about a year and a half. Uh, there were mm-hmm. a lot of as you know as a writer, personal things that happen, uh, mm-hmm. interruptions. The second book took two years, and, you know, the same thing. I had her daughter get married, and then she had a baby and all these wonderful events. But when I sat down to write, I thought 
the very same thing. You know, can I actually write a book? I have no experience in writing. I have no training, you know, in uh, writing novels. But I had a burning story that was evolving inside of me. So I thought, well, I'm going to write it and just see what happens. And it came and flowed so naturally. I couldn't wait to start the next chapter just to see what was going to happen because I really had no idea. And there was no writer's block. It was just like a constant flow of it. But then after I thought, okay, I'm finished, and I had some friends that helped me with the editing and gave me advice, you know, well, you need to change this or do that, and I, I treasure what they poured into me. But I thought, okay, I don't know how to publish. I don't know what to do. So I really had a lot of prayer time just to make the right steps. And I will give a shout-out to Peter Young Husband. Um, I had seen on Goodreads where he had marked my book to read, and it was the as it was in the days of Noah that caught his attention. So I sent him a personal message and just told him if he did have a chance to read it, I would love to know what his opinion was because I knew he read a lot, he reviewed, and he would be honest with me. So when he gave me a positive review, it was just an encouragement to continue, and and he has been an amazing man to help many authors in giving them the reviews that will help to interest readers. So I, I completely empathize with those that say, I don't know what will anybody, you know, all of those questions that kind of haunt you when you feel like you've got a story to tell. I agree uh, about that. And Peter, like I said, Peter is great. I remember, <laughs> uh, I think I, I said this for the uh, show, I remember when I wrote my short story with the Realms of Our Own uh, distributed anthology that a few of us did, it was my first time really delving, not my first time, my second time delving into speculative fiction, but I was hanging out with uh, big dogs, as I can say, in speculative fiction, and I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm a romance writer, you know, <laughs> so right. uh, Peter, uh, he read my uh, short story, and that affirmation that, hey, I must be a good writer, it really helped me out a lot, because he didn't have to write a positive review at all. That's why I always mm -hmm. appreciate uh, when we get good reviews, I always appreciate that, because someone can read a book and go, this sucked. You know, sometimes you get that. You yes. get those like, you know, I didn't like this book at all. And, I, and they, they'll say exactly like I said, it. this sucked, you know, or I have one person say, this book should be taken off shelves and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you like, you know, but when Peter read, uh, read that, he really is a huge encouragement to those of us who are in the Christian speculative uh, fiction genre. So make sure that you stop by his website. I want to give a shout out to him. Make sure you stop by his website, which is christianfictionreviewguru.blogspot.com. Dot AU. He's in Australia, and I know he was the one who reached out to me initially about your book because he was just really like, wow, you got to talk to her. You got to talk to her. So I'm really glad we connected. Another thing I want to ask you about practical-wise when it comes to writing, when it comes to the writing, um, when you begin to get ready for your story, are you what they call a pantser or do you outline your story? What they call a pantser or a plotter? For those of you who don't know pantsers, when you write by the city of your pants, you write on inspiration, you got a mood going on, and plotters are those who outline uh, a lot of their details. So how do you write, Jane, and what would you recommend? Well, for me, I'm strictly a pantser. Uh, mm -hmm. As I mentioned a while ago, when I go into a new chapter, I have no idea what's going to happen until I actually get into it. And I believe, though, that this is being led of the Spirit because the Spirit has a story to tell. The Spirit has a direction to go in. I do a lot of research. Um, I even have some friends that research and will send me links. You look at this, you know, it, it may play in. Um, a very good friend of mine, Nathan Brotman, is constantly sending me links. And he is actually the real-life son of the Professor Brotman in my books, uh, yeah. who was the inspiration of the character. But the research plays so much a part of how you know, the story, you want it to be good, but I want, when somebody reads about astral travel, I want them to Google it and see this is a real event. You know, when they read about Summerland, that they can Google it and find out this is the paradise place that the New Agers believe in. You know, so everything that I use is from, you can Google it and you can find information. Doesn't mean I agree with it, you know, on a biblical level, 
but it mm-hmm. does mean that there are people that do agree with it and are following those trains of thought, and I'm trying to expose the deceptions in them. We got another question that came in. Um, we got a few minutes left before the show ends. Erica from Facebook says, when Jesus, re- when Jesus returns, what will we be doing as Christians? What service roles? Erica, thank you so much for your question. Jane? Okay, what will we be doing as Christians? Yes. Yeah. Is that mm-hmm. what that What service okay. roles? Yeah. Well, the Bible says that we are kings and priests, that we will rule and reign with him. And, you know, that is a long teaching, and, again, you know, everybody doesn't agree. But my personal belief is we will have a 1,000 years of millennial peace where we rule and reign before Satan is released for the final time. There will be human beings that live, that survive the tribulation period. They go into that, and they will repopulate the earth. But we, as the Christians, or those of us that... Uh, the mortal has taken on immortality, we will rule and reign and be the rulers of this earth. That's what I believe the Bible teaches, and we've got a big job ahead. We're not going to be sitting around on clouds playing harps. I do do not believe that. (laughs) You know, it's interesting that you say that there is another faith institution, which I will leave unnamed, that uh, mocks us saying we're going to be on harps, on clouds, strumming hearts. And, um, I remember uh, one gentleman said, a um, very famous guy, Hank Kennegraff, he said, do you really think that we're going to be sin- sitting on the cloud streaming hearts when we can look at the Lord and Creator face to face? Do you really think we're going to be doing that? You know what I mean? It's like, is that really going to happen? You know, like, like we're, like we're going to be perfectly bored with the Creator of my entire being mm. before me. You know, what, you know, and so... Yeah, I, I, I like that answer you gave, and it's just very fascinating. You know, we are at the end of our show, and Jane, I have such a good time. I hope we've scintillated those of you listening about the Omega Watchers. I know we had a lot of calls, those of you listening in, uh, hitting on Facebook, hitting me on Twitter, wherever you are. Uh, we had a lot of good conversation. I'm really glad because this stuff is what we love to talk about. We love to talk about end times and eschatology. And for those of us who have a different viewpoint, As um, some of you know, guess what? It's okay. We can agree to disagree and have vigorous discussions about these. We don't have to let them divide us. And I think that's the main part of this, that if all this stuff is going to happen, we would need more unity now than ever, I would think, Jane. You know, I think we would need more unity now than ever. While we're up there saying, well, you voted this way or you voted that way or you believe this about that. You, You know, while all that's going on, Satan is just creeping in. He's creeping mm-hmm. in, dividing the church, and we're all worried about one thing, and he's just creeping in. Just, hey, let's break him up some more. Let's fragment it, you know. But thankfully, the Lord is going to bring us all back together if we aren't already by the time he comes. And so, Jane, I want people to know where they can find you online. So go ahead and tell us where we can find you online. Okay, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, my author page is The Omega Watchers. Janie Woodley Hedrick. Uh, I also have a blog uh, under Jane Hedrick. I have a Google uh, account, so um, pretty much if they type in my name, they should be able to find me. And the best place would be on Facebook. That way they can send me private messages or make comments on my page. I also have a sister page to that, just the Omega Watchers, where we have uh, continuous feed on events that are taking place that either tie to a book I have written, prophetic events that seem to tie in, things that are happening that keeps the prophetic dialogue going. So mm-hmm. they would be uh, welcome to join us on both of those venues. You know, I always want to encourage writers to write. And so in a few moments we have left, we got about two minutes left. In a few moments we have left, go ahead and give encouragement to those authors who have not picked up the pen to pick up the pen and write. If you have a story to tell, then you have a unique opportunity. I believe God speaks to us individually, a message, and if we don't tell it, that story may never be told, or at least not the way that you will. So open your heart, take that pen, and dare, just dare to go ahead and let the Holy Spirit guide you. It was a big step for me. It was scary at times. Uh, There were times I would close my computer and say, this is just useless, it's hopeless, Um, I'm done with this, 
and yet it would continue to churn. So if it's inside you, you need to let it out and then let God direct your path. Jane, I can't think of a better way to end the show tonight. I want to thank you so much for being with me on the show, and I cannot wait to have you back and have you back real soon. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you, Parker. This has been a real pleasure. We were having such a good time talking to Jane E. Woodley Hedrick. She is the author of the Omega Watcher series. Let me tell you, if you love end times prophecy, if you love eschatology, if you love the book of Revelations, if you'd like to keep up with current events, you definitely want to get a copy of Jane's book today. It's available online wherever books are sold. If you want to read a detailed review, go to my friend, Christian fiction review guru, Peter Young Husband. And read his review of these books. He gave very detailed reviews about them. And you are going to want to read them once you're done reading these books. You're going to definitely enjoy them. So go ahead. Love on my sister today. And get a copy of Omega Watchers. And then don't forget to get the next copy. The next series of the book called The Third Strand. Which just came out very recently. So you're going to get the first book and the second book. Get it today. You will not be disappointed. Thank you so much for joining me for this edition of The Right Stuff. I'm the queen of Tuesday nights, Parker J. And you have a wonderful, absolutely glorious, blessed day. Thank you for joining us for this edition of The Right Stuff. Follow Parker online at parkerjcole.com. To hear this show and other shows, visit the show archive at therightstuffradio.wordpress.com. We'll be back same time next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Experience a new way to shop at Value City Furniture. With made-to-mix furniture, you can now easily mix and unmatch styles to create a space that's totally you. So long, Matchy Matchy. It's time to mix it up and make it you. And now, hurry to Value City Furniture for our Labor Day sale and get free delivery plus 36 months no interest financing on your Value Plus credit card when you spend $19.99 and up. Plus, shop this week and save big on select bedrooms, dining rooms, reclining groups, and more during the Labor Day sale at Value City Furniture. Financing subject to credit approval. See store for details.